asked for it. <laughs> I went and done it. We're here with Joe and we're here with Steve Austin. Uh, it's Dave. Dave yeah. Austin. Yeah. He was my nemesis, you know. Yeah. When I was at school, he was all over the place. But Lee Majors, not not no, you're thinking no. about a restaurant. Yeah, I am. Yeah, no, yeah no, absolutely. No. Yeah, Stone the Cold six million Steve dollar man. And we are here yeah. with the six million dollar man. I'll be honest. Million I'm not sure what man. either one of them are talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, you're <laughs> young. <laughs> yeah, Steve Austin. Lol. Yeah. Okay. Good. No, no, no. They, they rebuilt this man. Yes, yes. He was yes. the first bionic. We man. have the technology. Yeah, yeah, is that the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got big see. rocket crash and then references. he up and the old eye. Yeah. Yeah. So there's worse. There's worse nicknames to have. It well, there's call. worse nicknames, but you know what kids are like. And yeah, at school. That, everybody called me Steve Austin. Yeah. But wasn't he the most handsome man of the he moment? Was. And obviously, yeah, 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 that yeah. terrible nickname. Yeah. You've got what a nightmare for you. Yeah, yeah. To carry through to this moment in time. But I was his brother. Oh right. Oh, I was him. Okay. So that was the problem. I was the. I was the. The non-bionic brother. Ah. Jo joking aside, everybody said to me after doing all these rambles, they kept saying, "Who are you going to get next?" and kept suggesting names. And, and Dave Austin, Dave Austin, kept coming up. And then, well, lo and behold, I've got to tell you, Gary, I've traveled it's, down it's for an it. honour for me to be here <laughs> <laughs> because, because this thing I can see that a little bit of an institution now, you know, and to not be included, frankly, yep. I'd have been hurt. Yep. <laughs> Well, I think this is more likely to be the uh, New yeah. Year's special, I think, where yeah. it'll be just <laughs> so one of those yeah, we'll released release. out. Look, yeah. look what yeah, we yeah. did at the end yeah. of the year. So, so I'll just tell you what I've witnessed today, and then we're going to ramble on with um, Dave. I've just witnessed uh, the master of presentation, mm -hmm. okay, under the Learning Lounge, along with what we could say with uh, the paddle one. Amateur? Yeah. The paddle one. <laughs> <amateur. laughs> no, no, no. Joe, you have the been <laughs> superb today. You really have. I no, mean, that we. It, yeah. we started with Joe in the studio, we had an auto cue, and Joe hadn't worked with an auto cue before, and he picked up and we went straight through the first paragraph, and who was the first person to screw up, Joe? Well, it, it doesn't matter, does it? Who doesn't was it? the first person? It, it was, you were trying to make me feel better, I think, Dave. I'm pretty sure it was deliberate. I, I do that a lot I'm pretty sure it was deliberate. I, I sort of throw yeah. the first line out badly, yeah, yeah, just, just yeah, to relax yeah. the person. You've yeah. got a lot of stuff to make you feel comfortable, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Tons of them. I, mean, I even yeah. throw like you're seven, so kind. You're so giving as an yeah. artist. <laughs> Several paragraphs of incorrectness. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I've, I've watched that and it's, it was majestic. Jedi, Jedi master, Padawan learner, beautiful moment. I'll, as we I'll be honest, stuff. it was. It's, it's very special for me personally because I started my electrical apprenticeship more years ago than I care to remember. Sitting in the classroom with the big old giant TV with the the cathode ray tube on the back and the video <laughs> uh, player, the actual cassette player in there, and uh, watching. Dave on screen, never for an instant imagining that a few years down the line I'd actually get to, to meet Dave and let alone actually get to present a video. So that's a really uh, quite a very special moment for me. So thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I'm going to say it is such a surprise to me that these things are so revered, mm. if I'm honest. I mean, I, I started working with Navigator Productions 30 years ago, mm. and it was as a presenter, it was just another job. Yeah. But I've realised in the last couple of years, as I've been meeting more and more people um, as we go through the mm. NRC stuff I've just yeah. been doing, how, how, what an impact there's been. Mm. And it's quite lovely, actually. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can imagine, it's quite lovely yeah, it's to nice. think that people have appreciated yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I had one young guy come up to me who was just in his second year, and he, he said, I'm passing my course because of you. Well, wow, of course, that's wow. not true. Mm. but. It was such yeah. a lovely thing for him it's to nice, say. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially for, for young people to come and say that as well. I think that is pretty yeah. Yeah, special, yeah. isn't it, for them to say that? And I always find it, because we're in a male-dominated industry, unfortunately, that there's not a huge mm -hmm. amount of females, and that's something that needs to be addressed, yeah, that for a male to offer condolence, congratulations, whatever yeah. they're doing, mm -hmm. that moment, for a male to do any of those type of things, it is it's, it's more difficult. So when I get messages on YouTube saying thank you from a gentleman, you think, mm. well, as a bloke, you've had to watch me and then thank me. Yeah. That's not a usual <laughs> gentlemanly thing. So when people are walking up to you yeah. at elect shows and all the rest of it, the drunk, the predominant, predominantly. Almost. Me, almost <laughs> correct it for me. Predominantly. Male, okay, <laughs> yeah, and so I'd imagine you know if we had more females in the electrical industry, obviously many more of them would be coming up to you as well. Do you know it fascinates me why we don't have more females? Yeah. Because I mean, electrical work is not inherently mm. heavy duty stuff, which is often put forward as the reason why there aren't so many female engineers. Mm. Yeah, but it's actually you can you can you know you don't get filthy, do you? Generally speaking, if you're doing an installation yeah. domestic, smart tech will bring them in though. Surely. Smart tech should bring them in, and I've had a couple of conversations where there are some women designers who really are interested in smart tech, yeah. and I think that's great. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it opens up the whole world of where well, we've got vulnerable people that more people can access it when they're female that's obviously a more reassuring experience mm -hmm. if you're in a vulnerable position well yeah. I, th I think for customers generally to have a female electrician 
and I'm sorry to say this, guys, but you know, people are still quite scared of tradesmen. Yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. Yeah. plumbers, electricians, whatever. When they roll up on the door, they sort of expect they're going to be ripped off. Oh, sort wow. of. Yeah. No, it's true, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, there is this. There's this worry mm. because they know more than I do. Mm. So what are they going to tell me is wrong with my installation? Yeah. That means it's cost money. Yeah. Whereas if you get a female, I suspect yeah. there'd be less suspicion. Yeah. I think it's fair to say it's 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 come a lot further from probably you know when we were when we're on site. But I think it's there's still a way to go, isn't there, in terms of the you know the the appearance well, of, of the, the trade. The, the truth industry. is that you know yeah. if somebody recommends you, I've just actually had dealings with a plumber. Mm. And I've had several bad experiences with plumbers. Mm. This guy has been superb. He's yeah. done everything he should do, and he's he's, he's made it very comfortable for me to mm. pay quite a large bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is your heating working at the minute? No, no, it is. No, we don't. Because <laughs> he didn't turn up. Because he let you <laughs> down. It's a classic. <laughs> he still like, has played it all in. But I still love him <laughs> <laughs> at this point. Mm. Perfect con man, I think that is. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I love that bloke because I was handing over watches, but nothing works. <laughs> the parts didn't come in, you know. <laughs> Another gullible fool. <laughs> The, more, the longer I leave it, the more it likely is a freezing yeah. cold, no hot water, cold yep. showers. He'll pay that money. In, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> There's more connections open today between the two of you, because yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, currently yeah. based in Northamptonshire. Yep, yeah, uh, and not, not born in Corby, but I, I consider myself an honorary Corby boy now. I've lived there for 15 years, I think, yeah, 15 years. And of course, Dave, you were not born in Corby, but no. you spent your formative years in Corby. Absolutely. Yeah. I was born in Leicester, yep. at the Royal Infirmary, yep. uh, but then we moved very quickly. We moved. Uh, from Leicester to a, a new house in Corby, yep. and uh, I grew up there 18 years. I was in Corby, and then went back as a policeman. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. a year or so later. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. fantastic. As a policeman in Corby. You are the, the the perfect mold. If you were going to design a policeman, it would look like you standing <laughs> yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. it would not have to talk or do the personality, <laughs> but the physical structure of a policeman. Yeah. If you drew it on a piece of paper, yeah. it would look like you, Dave. Well, I used to go on shift with a guy called uh, Ian Lutter who was six foot eight wow. and he was a rugby player. He was a big boy. Wow. Yeah. And I think people used to see us walking down the street together thinking, well, I have the little one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't stood next to you filming today. I kept telling, oh, that's his shoulder. There we go. So yeah, so I would imagine with, with, a, with one of the policemen's helmets on top yeah, yeah. of that, quite an imposing figure. Yeah. I love being tall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you, some people mm. don't yeah. like the stature they are, no, whether they're no. tall or short. Yeah. But I've always loved being yeah. tall. You and like being six four, don't you? Yeah, I'm six four. Yeah, yeah, yeah 48 that. stone. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, <laughs> but but you'd see that didn't people walk in and through doorways mm. and they're, they're, they're constantly yeah. in that position. You don't. You, you walk no, into a room. You, you are. Yeah. 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 yeah, I like being the tall. In fact, I get very upset on the tube if I'm not the tallest person. The other day, there was, <laughs> I saw somebody over the over the heads of all the other people. I thought he's a big bloke, yeah. and I had to actually go and stand next to him. And I thought he's bigger than me. <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Upset yeah, me enormously. Absolutely classic. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So you know now the next Brilliant. election, you're going to be every big guy is going to yeah, come yeah. up and stand <laughs> next yeah. to you and <laughs> give it to you. Uh, yeah, so Dave, how big are you? How big are you, Dave? Yeah, so Certainly it wasn't a problem with Darren. No, 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 he's no, 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 no. tower over him. No, very no, no, absolutely. Yeah. As he's bouncing off every wall in the building. Yeah. Fantastic. We all love Darren. Yeah. So, so we're in Corby. We've, you know, maybe to some people you've, you've become a policeman. Okay, and that, how long did that last for you then? Well, the, the police thing was a big mistake. Okay. I mean, I enjoyed it enormously, and with hindsight. Actually, if I'd stayed in the police at that time, this was before the time when the police were on the telly all the time, you know, and you mm -hmm. saw lots of documentaries. And they were just moving into media. And I spent my first few months working in crime intelligence ah. with a guy called Sergeant McTall, and we were, we were feeding the stuff to Crime Watch. Oh. So we were feeding the information. So, oh, right. and this was, you know, at a time when the police weren't really on Crime Watch yeah. as such, it was presented by sure. Nick Ross, wasn't it? So uh, we just gave them the information, but of course, police started to appear in vision. Yeah. And had I stayed in the force, I suspect my yeah. direction would have been. That so you still been to another route into. into yeah, yeah. So you still would have got it. It would have taken me yeah, there. All actually. paths yeah. led yeah. to yeah. the final destination. But I realised as a, walk, a working officer, it was not the way to go, and I, I really wanted to get to the BBC. Mm. So I eventually I left there and joined the Air Force. Oh. That was ah, a new one. That's got you, isn't it? You know that one. threw that into the mix, didn't <laughs> you? A little chat before, and we didn't know that one, didn't <laughs> oh, we? Went, I so. have exemplary on my certificate of um, discharge from the Air Force. Oh, exemplary right. conduct for the whole six weeks. So, oh, wow, so six, you stuck it out for six weeks? Six whole weeks. Well done. <laughs> 42 days of service. <laughs> <laughs> Meddled up at the end. <laughs> And then at 20 years old, I was unemployed and uh, had, had my military career and my police career behind me. So oh. it was all a bit of a mess at that point. All right. right. But then uh, I wanted to join the BBC. I therefore took a job as a runner in Wardour Street and worked in the film industry. Wow, fantastic. And that was all designed to get me into the me jar. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did three years of that. And after uh, 23, the BBC 
took me in with open arms as a trained sound guy. Yeah, you did the very technical part of it, though, yeah. didn't you? At that yeah. stage, you weren't in front of camera, if we're talking no, no, about No, 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 this was all sound. I was a sound operator at a broadcasting house yep. in London and spent eight glorious years with my BBC ID card mm. working with all, all the radio shows there. Uh, the, the job was split between balancing the sound on the networks, the live, the four networks, so radio one through to four, uh, no five at the time. And uh, also we worked in the Linear Control Room, which did all the circuit switching for telly and radio. Oh wow. Yeah. So anything you ever heard on TV or radio came down through the wow. control room as a hub to go out through the line network. We also fed the transmitters and did all the transmitter work as well. So it was a, it was a very interestingly split role, which required a high technical competence and also an artistic competence in, mm -hmm. in sound balancing. Okay, it's a perfect storming. I loved it, I absolutely loved it. And then yeah. you're, at the time you're doing that, you're trying to work your way into the next position, which was? You, well, I always still harbored this desire to be a presenter. That, was, yeah. that really was mm -hmm. it. And I used to sit there balancing the shows, all the jocks at the time that you now know as historic, but you know, Mike Reeds and all these people. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to look through the glass and think, I want to be there, yeah. I don't want to be here. Even though I love being here, yeah. I want to be there. Uh, and what happened was John Burke came in, rationalised the department of 140 odd guys down to about eight. Oh, like wow. his computer switching came sure. in and we weren't needed, yeah. all the plugs and cords. Mm -hmm. So they gave everybody that wanted an opportunity to go anywhere they wanted in the BBC. I mean, oh, wow. how glorious is that? That's and incredible. I took up um, an attachment with Radio Shropshire as a producer and within two weeks I was on air. Oh, fantastic. And uh, at the end of that attachment they recommended another attachment to local radio. I took that up went to Sussex and Kent and when I went to Kent uh, I was given the opportunity to deputise on every show pretty much as the people went on holiday I oh, just wow. took over their oh, show wow, so I did breakfast I did the religious show I did the country music show wow. <laughs> and fantastic experience and on the back of that wow. they gave me a short-term contract to present a sports show through the summer uh, and on the back of that they said we want you so I brilliant I, but, I turned but, them down sorry back and wait what there's more, there's more twists <laughs> in this story. So, so let's just come back though. So, so that, that's presenting but not seeing, because we're, we're talking right. to a mic. Yeah, yeah, so radio, so, so, so that's again, that's a, so where we got to now, we're going to put all the gaps in between. That's a big leap from talking to a mic. And, and you yeah. started out never wanting to be on camera. Well, I just yeah. have to remind you that on the way home when you're gloating. Oh. Okay, yep. Yeah. No, no gloating. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when he first started out on YouTube, he, he would only do the mic and he'd only show his screen. He wouldn't want to be on camera. And he said when he came back to me, oh, a bit reluctant and all the rest of it. I, looked, I saw a lot of that reluctancy and you'll see it on their, uh, their channels when it's been released. But, <laughs> but you've gone from talking to a mic to now trying to work your way into camera-based stuff. There's a big difference. Well, that okay, but that's because of this company, Navigator Productions. Mm -hmm. I was working, at the time I think I was doing lunchtime news, I can't remember which show I was on, and the programme organiser just dropped a phone number on my desk and said, there's a local video company looking for presenters if you want to go along. Uh, and so I went along and did a screen test for them and they took me on. And at the time, I was reading a script that was hanging under a camera. I mean, I really, this was, I forget what it was, Mighty Motors or something. Mm. What was it, Terry? Oh, what was the first Ma one we did? Not what was the first script not Magic, I ever read? Magic Motor, what's it called? That was the one I said in the car on the way here. Yeah. 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 Go on, Terry. I don't know. Uh, it, probably it, might, it might have been the original, yeah, it was AC Motors 1 it was called then. It became Mighty Motor in right. 2000. I know it was, high, it, it was the script that was a little bit beyond my expertise, oh, yeah, it has to be said. Pretty technical, yeah. But I read it and it was all right and they seemed to like me. So I, I just carried on getting the gig. And on the back of that, I picked up um, work at Sky. I was doing out of vision continuity at Sky What's for a while. Sky. Out, out <laughs> of vision continuity. I know well, everybody else knows it out there, but I'm a little struggling. Well, we, they did a program on Sky at the weekends, which was called Saturday and Sunday Alive. It was an eight hour sports show, right. uh, which involved a manner of sports from speed skating, Nordic skiing, um, Formula One, golf. Oh, wow. So, what they had is they had three of us sitting in a booth at Isleworth. I was the lead presenter because I was in English but there was a Dutch guy and a German guy in the next booths. We all had lip mics and monitors and a, a talk back. And so we would sit there and Gallery would say, okay, coming out of the skiing, fill us for two minutes, we're going into the golf next. And then halfway through the two minutes, they'd say, delay on the OB, go to the motor racing or whatever. So it was just a case of keeping right. it going, right. throwing to the ad breaks. But the funny thing was, I was, as I say, the, the Gallery were working to me. I was the master presenter in the sense I was in English. And my poor German colleague had to basically fill my time in German, which takes a lot oh, longer. Wow. And if I listened across him, he's going, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and he used to come to him and say, please, can you speak a little slower? I, I can't keep up with you. <laughs> 
But I, I was working to the gallery and I got some dirty money going, counting out of VT 10, oh, 9, wow. 8, or throat to ad break now. Wow. And I, this is when I first learned to work to open talkback because if, if you work to talkback, yeah. they give you the choice of switched or open. Right. So switched is when the gallery press a button and go, okay, say yeah. this or do that. Yeah. That's quite a shock in the yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah. So I used to like having everything going on all the time yeah. because what you'd hear is you'd hear in the background while they were just chattering and talking about what they were doing at the weekend and everything while something was on, you'd hear a bloke over the other side go, yeah, we've got a problem with the golf. And you think, hang on. Mm. I need to prepare. Need to so then you that. start pulling the post-it notes off the screen and start assembling the, because I, I basically put post-it notes around the screen so I could assemble a script in any n order wow. as is required. And you could just move them around and then just read off the headlines. Um, and that, that learning that skill, I walked around the house for hours with the radio on, right. reading a book. Out loud. Oh, wow. okay. So I could ignore this yeah, yeah. and just read the book yeah, out loud. Yeah. And I got to the point where you can have, I can have any amount of stuff going on in my ear and just completely ignore it. That really is an yeah. amazing And skill. that's again, yeah. somebody who makes it look incredibly yeah. easy yeah, 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 yeah. does an incredible amount of work Cause to make it look incredibly easy. The additional easy. skill there is tuning out what you don't need to hear, yeah. but then being but ready for the that stuff that you do exactly. need to hear. That's the skill, isn't it? you get really it, cute you know? at that. You think, yeah. hang on a minute. Like, even the yeah. tone of voice. Yeah, yeah, they might be yeah. saying something quite innocuous, but the yeah. tone of voice you think, they sound concerned. I remember picking up a couple of things like that well ahead of time and, and getting myself mm. ready. Yeah, uh, and, and it's just, it's all the stuff you don't think about, don't you? You know, when you're listening to or watching something like that on the TV and you hear a voiceover, you don't think about yeah. all the stuff that's <laughs> going on behind that one voice. I had or, a or piece on the yeah, telly. Yeah. I had a demo general. reel yeah. once where what I did was I recorded the output at home mm. on, the, on the video, uh, but I took in a little recorder and I put it inside my earpiece yeah. so I could record talkback. Right. And then when I got back, I overlaid the talkback on what's going on on the output. So you yeah. can hear the counting going sure. on and hear my voice right. doing yeah. the continuity. Yeah. To give you a realistic yeah, it was just, sound I mean, of what I it's thought, like. I yeah. thought it would impress people on the demo. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it wasn't a straight, you come here and got the job. It was an audition again, wasn't it? It was a bit well, of an X Factor. It was, it was the early X Factor, wasn't it? <laughs> I have a friend, I, when I was working at the BBC, I had a friend who was a, a senior producer. And she was taking an interest in my career because I was starting to make a few waves. And she said, you need to meet my friend who's a director at Sky. So she arranged a dinner party. I went around and we had a nice dinner party. And as far as I was concerned, this lady didn't, I mean, we got on all right, but I thought no interest at all in me as a professional. The next day I got a phone call and she said, um, they've asked you to go for a screen test at Sky. Right. Exciting, yeah. well, fantastic. So I turn up at Arsworth. There's a full gallery, wow. not just one person. They've got everybody on the gallery. I get chucked in a booth, and then they just throw so much stuff at me. At one point, they threw me a football match and said, just commentate. Oh, wow. I had no idea what no prep anything about it, just commentate. What they were obviously testing yeah. is what does the guy do when it all yeah, gets tough? when he's under pressure. So they gave me links to do, they gave me stuff. And I thought, this is ridiculous. I know nothing about sport. Yeah. I mean, I'm really, I'm not, I'm not sporty. So I just made up a load of guff, really. And afterwards, I was so convinced I hadn't got it. The editor was a chap called Rick Dubby, who was the editor of the programme. He said, let's go up and have a meal in the restaurant. So we went up. And I said to him to open the meal, I said, well, Rick, I've really enjoyed myself today. I'm so sorry I've wasted your time. He said, no, not at all. He said, you start in two weeks. Oh, wow. And brilliant. <laughs> well, it was brilliant. But for the first three or four weeks, yeah. I was all at sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the end of the programme, we had a 15-minute roundup of all the European sporting action. Right. And I mean yeah, everything, yeah, like, yeah. as I say, Nordic skiing, yeah. stuff, Germany, Belgium, the Bundesliga. Yeah, you know. yeah. And I also had to do, as the results came in, I had to tabulate uh, the league table and work out something to say about each of the league tables all around Europe oh, wow. as the results came in. So I had to work out where the teams had gone to. And we only got those results with about five minutes to go because the matches were finishing, it was a live program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I can distinctly remember them saying, we want 20 seconds on each table. So you sit there and you start writing your script. As it comes to it, the previous OB overruns. Okay, continue, if you're going down 10 seconds only on, please, on each table. Oh, so and, that would come, and suddenly you've got to start it. cutting. And I learned the skill then of subbing from the bottom. You know, right. you write your headlines and then you write the less interesting stuff and you right. sub it, right. you just stop anywhere you like. But these are the, yeah. This is the stuff that happened. And at the same time, I landed a cable channel on uh, Unipart, a cable channel in uh, Croydon, based out of Croydon. All right. So I was interviewing celebrities uh, on, a, on a Thursday. There you go. <laughs> very much like this, Gary. Full it was very just like this. <laughs> <laughs>
on a phone, on a 15 quid tripod, two yeah. mics, but, but, it's absolutely but, like that. So way. to answer your question, that's where it sort of started. I drifted whilst in radio into all these other bits mm. and slowly got myself into telly. But it was all on the back of the fact that I was the backbone of it was doing these videos for Navigator. Yeah. Okay, yeah. brilliant. That sounds yeah. brilliant. Mm-hmm. You're also so this, this also a keen gardener. So if we're away from from work, yeah, yeah. But that's that's a strong statement. That yeah. sounds like a bloke. Oh, absolute. Like is it oh. weed free? Oh, um, well, moss she was. Free. <laughs> <laughs> I had a very exciting day yesterday because we've got a very large ash tree in our garden. Mm. And is it going to be exciting? Is it going to be? No, it's really exciting. Really exciting. Because I got we we got a company in to crown the tree. Right, take it down. Yep. Uh, so I've got now a huge log pile, which I cut up yesterday with a chainsaw. Lovely. And they've chipped all the other stuff. So I've got a huge pile Fantastic. of chippings. I can spread it all over the garden. Mulch it. Gorgeous. Can I just, uh, genuinely, I've planted some bulbs uh, in the autumn time. And I've, I've put them under a layer of bark, so they're, they're sort of, they're quite, they're reasonably like deep. That, yeah. And they're, they're already sprouting. Mm, I've got right. bulbs coming out now, and I'm paranoid about Ooh, if, it, if there's a frost it. or a no, snow. So will they it. still be there? Will they, they flower in it. spring? They will love it. They'll yeah. be okay. They'll just, if there's, if there's snow, you'll see the little, little green shoots yeah, yeah, with yeah. the snow. Oh, they're completely and they'll be fine. okay. Yeah, you can okay. freeze them. Yeah, that'd be glorious. That's good to know. In cool. fact, that's good that they do that. Yeah. If you've got alliums, yeah. if you've got any yeah. onions, they need to be frozen. Yeah, because it kind of yeah. kickstarts the growing that's process, it. doesn't yeah. it? They need that yeah. cold snap. My garlic's it. all in. I mean, yeah. it's, oh, it's I snap. love growing <laughs> garlic. Yeah. We've we moved house not that long ago, and my gardening has consisted of landscaping. I've been putting a driveway in, and I've raised the back garden up by about seven hundred mil. It's been quite a job. Just ignore him. Um, and so I'm looking forward now to get to the point where I can actually start making it beautiful. You know, now I've got like the, the foundations. I'm going to say, you've done it the right way. Get yeah. your structure sorted yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you're planting. Yeah, exactly. Because I went into a garden that was quite mature and I tried to work around the existing planting. Yeah. It's not easy. No, no, no. no it takes real skill. You know, we have a little tradition at where I live. Yeah. Um, that's my house. I live with yeah. my wife, not, yeah. not some institution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not Navigator Productions. <laughs> <laughs> um, that at least one day, and this year I managed five, yeah. we only eat produce oh, from wow. the garden. Oh, yeah. what a brilliant to thing fill to the do. Plate with, yeah. That is you should genuinely fantastic. Garden, I love that. Yeah, I will do. I will yeah. do. That's brilliant. I've only got grass. That's going to be really tricky in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's astroturf. Yeah. Well, you could be like Ed Stafford. Yeah. Have you ever seen Ed Stafford? Yeah. No. The bloke that they drop into the oh. uh, into the wilderness naked and he yeah. has to survive on anything. Yeah. Well, well, let's, bring, let's don't record encourage one of them, shall no, we? No, no, no. Yeah, we'll drop yeah, me naked. We can naked. drop Gary into his garden naked. We won't yeah, be doing this. Survive. We won't yeah, be doing this. Do you know what the plants are called outside the front of your house? Have you ever? No. Okay. Absolutely not a clue. Yeah. They're overgrown. They're overgrown plants. Yeah. yeah, okay. Rhododendrons. Rhododendrons. Ah. I don't know what they are. So you've got an acid soil then? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah. So, uh, well, we're okay because we're at the last bit when we went to garden as well. Yeah, when we cut, <laughs> cut oh, that, away. That, to, that's yeah. the dream. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's been a pleasure for me. Yeah. To watch these two, they didn't get to watch themselves. They're going to watch themselves in a minute. I can see it on the green screen getting cut in with the background at the moment. Oh wow! You're going to get to see that video across Joe's channel and across. I would imagine. Would it be on your YouTube platform? We presume. Uh, you're talking to the guy that just speaks yes. the words. Yeah. Yes. 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 So yes. Terry's yes. in the background. Yeah. So you're going to be able to see their video on uh, both platforms. Yeah. Once it's out, obviously, I'll cut a small section of it and I'll release it to say, look, jump over and watch them. It was a beautiful experience for me to watch you two work together, and I'd like to yeah. think that that collaboration will be stronger going forward. Yeah. Well, I I absolutely agree with that, and I think Joe, you've definitely got talent. You, this is not just no, something you've fudged today. Too kind of you. You have got communication talent, and not everybody's got it. So you can do this very well, and I think you guys, what you're doing and how you're getting it out there and getting the views is fantastic. Thank and, we, you. and we need get get good education out there so that everybody can learn what they need to learn to do the job well. That's what we're all about. And to, to end it, to raise the standards yeah. in the industry. Absolutely. Yeah. So you spent 30 Absolutely. years producing quality video content yep. to learn from, to raise the standards in the industry. Mm-hmm. We've been at it 18 months and that's yep. our goal. Yep. Our only focus is to produce material to raise standards. Yep. We enjoyed doing these things, these are yep. for us. This is yep. another ticking our boxes, yep. isn't it, today? Absolutely, a big, big box tick today, yes. <laughs> well, thanks very much for inviting yeah. me. It's well, we've got, we, we've got to end it we our do way. Have an we, ending. We've got an ending, Dave. We, we forgot to mention this yeah, before we started recording. Cool. I'm sorry, yeah. So what we do, Dave, is we have to go. We hope this video has been some help, and, and then you have to do a big up. thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then if you want to sneak your winning on the back of it, I'll cut that out. So, it's been an immense pleasure yep. to sit with Joe Robinson Training, who's going to soon be all over everything. <laughs> no. The legend that is Dave Austin. Yes. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. You're, you're my New Year's special. Absolute pleasure. And we're going to end it with We, we hope, hope this video has been some help. help. Beautiful. So, see you soon.
See you soon. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>